Hormones play a tremendous role in acne. In this video, we're gonna get right to the source and talk about how spironolactone can address the hormones that are driving all acne. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. John Barbieri, a board-certified dermatologist, acne expert, and one of the leading researchers on spironolactone for acne. Now, you may have heard me say this before, but if you haven't, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. All acne is hormonal. Whether you are a 15-year-old boy or a 35-year-old woman, your acne is hormonal. This is why acne starts around puberty. At that time, androgens like testosterone and DHEAS, those start to rise. Those turn on the oil glands that we have in our skin. And that oil gland makes something called sebum. That sebum is food for acne bacteria, which eats it up and starts to overproliferate and leads to inflammation. And that stuff starts to gunk up and clog up our pores. And together, these factors lead to the development of acne. So how then does spironolactone treat acne? Well, it blocks those androgens that are driving the process. Although it was originally developed as a potassium-sparing diuretic, spironolactone also has anti-androgen properties. It can block those testosterone and DHEAS that are turning on that oil gland, and this way it can treat acne. In fact, dermatologists have been using it to treat acne for over 30 years. We now have a number of studies to support the effectiveness of spironolactone, including the recently completed SAFA trial in the UK. Spironolactone not only can help with acne, but because it addresses androgens, it addresses those hormones, it can also help with dark hairs on the skin or skin oiliness as well. While doses as low as 25 milligrams a day can work for acne, in my experience and when we look at the data, doses 100 to 150 milligrams a day tend to be the best for patients with acne. The reason this dosing is so important is that spironolactone is a relatively slow medicine. It takes about three to five months to reach its maximum effectiveness. Now you'll see improvements within a month or two, but the maximum, the main effects happen more like three to five months. And this contrasts with other acne treatments where you can typically see effects in about eight to 12 weeks. And since I know everybody with acne, they want to be better yesterday. From my standpoint, we really want to make sure we're starting at a strong enough dose because the worst thing that can happen is you start spironolactone, you come back three months later, and then you hear, you know what? We just need to use a higher dose. That's the reason you're not better yet. So in my practice, what I do is I try to start at around a dose of 100 and 150 milligrams a day. And the way I do this is I start at 50 milligrams a day for the first week and have no side effects then go up to 100 milligrams a day. And I think this approach helps balance the beneficial effects of spironolactone with potential side effects. Beyond dosing, another common question that comes up is how long do I have to take spironolactone? And this is a complicated question to answer. There's really only one acne treatment that truly modifies the course of acne, and that's isotretinoin. It actually causes the spacious glands, those oil glands in the skin, to go away, and so it can lead to a remission of acne. Every other acne treatment, including spironolactone, will help while you're on it, but once you stop, your acne is really eventually going to go back to whatever is going to be without that treatment. And now we know that acne gets less over time. And so what we do find that people are able to come off spironolactone, but what we don't know is, is it gonna be a few months? Might it be a few years? Because everybody's acne and their experience with it is different. When it comes to side effects, one of the great things is about spironolactone is that most people who take spironolactone have almost no side effects. In the SAFA trial that I was mentioning earlier, the only side effects that are more common with spironolactone were headache and low blood pressure and lightheadedness. And this makes sense, right? Spironolactone was originally developed as a potassium sparing diuretic, as a blood pressure medicine. So it makes sense that it has a very mild blood pressure effect. And particularly maybe in those who have low blood pressure at the start, they can end up having issues with lightheadedness. But for again, most people, these aren't a problem. Spironolactone also can cause breast tenderness and irregular menstrual periods, but this tends to only happen at higher doses, like 200 milligrams a day. For most people taking spironolactone, this isn't a problem. And if it does occur, we can lower the dose, or actually if you take it with a birth control pill, that helps to get rid of these side effects for most people. Some also notice that spironolactone makes them go to the bathroom more. This kind of goes back to that potassium sparing diuretic effect. Again, it's not an issue for most people, but if it is, sometimes splitting the dose, taking some in the morning and some at night can help with that. There were historically concerns about whether spironolactone might be associated with an increased risk of cancers like breast cancer. These concerns were largely based on animal studies, and when we've looked at it with people, it doesn't seem like it's an issue. We have over 30 million person years of follow-up looking at spironolactone use, and it doesn't appear to be associated with cancers like breast cancer or other cancers. In addition, since spironolactone is a potassium-sparing diuretic, 
there have been some concerns about whether it might increase someone's risk of having high potassium, hyperkalemia. Fortunately, in young, healthy women being treated for acne, this doesn't seem like it's an issue, and we now have several studies supporting that it can be used safely without even monitoring potassium in young, healthy women being treated for acne. Related to this issue, there have also been some concerns about combining spironolactone with certain kinds of combined oral contraceptives that have something in them called drosperinone. Drosperinone is the progestin that can go along with the estrogens of combined oral contraceptive, and it's thought to be helpful for acne. But it also has some antiandrogenic properties like spironolactone, and there have been some concerns about could it increase that risk of hyperkalemia when used together. Fortunately, again, we have several studies supporting that you can safely use spironolactone and drosperinone containing combined oral contraceptives. So this again doesn't seem like it's an issue in young healthy women being treated for acne. Finally, it is important to keep in mind that spironolactone is on some banned substance lists, such as with the NCAA. This is not because it's actually a performance enhancing drug, but because it can be used to mask, to hide the use of other performance enhancing drugs. And unfortunately, there have been some athletes who've been banned from competition because they're taking spironolactone for acne. So this is an important thing to check before starting spironolactone. Now, a key question that often comes up is how does spironolactone compare to our other acne treatments like oral antibiotics or isotranoin, also known as Accutane? And when we compare these to each other, it looks like spironolactone works about as well or better than oral antibiotics. We don't have a clinical trial again in this question, but the data we do have seems to suggest that it's very similar in its effectiveness to oral antibiotics. And it helps us avoid those risks of oral antibiotics like changing our microbiome, hurting our good bacteria, or antibiotic resistance. In addition, there are several case series of patients who've been treated with isotranoin and then they had their acne come back. They either didn't get better or their acne came back after they stopped. And what we've seen in these studies is that using spironolactone actually can help get these patients the clear skin. So these are patients who couldn't get better with isotranoin Accutane, one of the medicines we think is the strongest treatments we have for acne, and they were able to get clear with spironolactone. So it certainly can be a useful alternative to oral antibiotics or to isotranoin to Accutane for those who'd like to avoid those kind of treatments. And again, a strength of spironolactone compared to these other treatments is that it has very few side effects. Most patients have none. Think about how much we worry about side effects with isotranoin with Accutane or even with oral antibiotics. So this is a real advantage that spironolactone can have over these other common acne treatments. Now again, spironolactone is a slower treatment. So if someone's goal is to get better in eight weeks, maybe something like an oral antibiotic might be a better choice for them, or maybe they start both and then plan on using spironolactone in the long run. But if someone has the patience to wait about two to five months to get to that benefit of spironolactone, it's definitely worth it. It can be a really good treatment for acne. Now, while this is a video about spironolactone, I also wanna point out that we now have a topical antiandrogen called Clascoderone. It goes by the brand name Winlevy. And similar to spironolactone, this can really address that fundamental hormonal drivers of acne. And because it's a topical treatment, we can actually use it in both men and women with acne. Unfortunately, spironolactone we can't use in men with acne because it can occasionally lead to breast development. But with clascoderone, because it's just topical, it's just in the skin, we don't have those issues. We don't have those side effect issues. So we can use it in both men and women with acne. And it's a nice treatment to consider in someone who wants to be on something like spironolactone, but they prefer to use a cream, a topical treatment, than a pill treatment, or maybe they can't tolerate spironolactone due to side effects or other issues. So to summarize, due to its anti-androgenic properties, spironolactone can be a great treatment for women with acne that addresses those fundamental hormonal drivers of all acne. In addition, it seems to be on par in terms of its effectiveness with other common acne treatments like oral antibiotics and even sometimes with isotretinoin. And notably, it has very few side effects. It's very well tolerated. And we've been using it for over 30 years without any worrisome safety signals. However, it is a slower medicine. It can take three to five months to reach its maximum effectiveness. So it does take some patience. And for this reason, I really recommend starting at a dose of around 100 to 150 milligrams a day if tolerated to make sure that we balance those benefits and side effects effectively. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, give it a like so that others can see it. We can share it with the community to educate everyone about the potential of spironolactone as an acne treatment and how to use it properly. In addition, for more acne and rosacea content, check out our channel and think about subscribing to stay up to date with the latest information. And then if you have questions about spironolactone, leave a comment below to ask me about acne. Thanks again for watching. See ya.